Editing your images, illustrations and video in Deep Matter was traditionally a case of double-clicking a file, entering your keywords and other metadata, and then optionally using copy-paste to transfer that information to a number of other files. In this video, we present you a new method of editing in Deep Meta. It's called Multi-Edit. My name is Frankie de Meijer. Let's have a look. For this demo, we will work with three batches of the same event. There's a first batch of children playing at the beach, which is a creative image batch. There's an editorial batch of the same beach. And there's a third batch with one video. You can see that we've named these three batches starting with Beach 2018. This means that if we go to the file section, we view all batches and we filter for Beach 2018, that we select the required files. Now, at the right hand side is the preview panel and you can see at the top that there's a new button now. This button will place the preview panel from the view mode into the edit mode. You click on it, you can see that fields become editable. They've been spread out across three different tabs. There's a general tab, there's the keywords tab and there's a releases tab. You can easily switch between the edit mode and the view mode by using the control E button. You can go directly to one of the three tabs by using the Alt K button for key, K for keywords, Alt R for releases and Alt G for general. More importantly, you can see that now we can select multiple files. In this case, all files have been selected. You can see at the right hand side we have nine items selected, six creative, one video and two editorial. As usual, you can fine tune the UI to suit your needs, make stuff bigger and smaller, depending on how much monitor real estate that you have or how good your eyesight is. You can use a slider. You can change the width of the preview panel as usual. Now let's do some editing. We can switch the right hand preview pane to the edit mode by clicking the pencil button. Or alternatively, we can use the shortcut on the keyboard, Control E, to switch between the view and the edit mode. We can see that not all the files have a country selected. So we'll select the ones that don't have a country. And in the right hand pane, we select the proper country for them. Now you can see in the list that the change is immediate. And I didn't click any save button, console button or OK button or anything like that. This was a design choice for Deep Meta to make editing efficient and quick. Of course, there's always a certain chance that you selected a huge number of files and you made some edit that you regret. And for this reason, an undo feature has been added. You can see at the bottom here, there's an undo button. And if I hover over it, you can see the last action that was performed. It was country being updated for six files. If I click the button, you can see that we're back to the original situation. If I regret doing the undo, I can click the redo button to have the edit take place again. Next, I'll have a look at the video. It doesn't have any title, so I'll be adding a title here.
And since this is a video, we get the chance to change the poster frame. Now, first of all, we'll arrange our UI a little bit. I will move the slider to a different position. And this will be the, the poster frame, the thumbnail that will be used on the sales page. You can see in the list that the change took place immediately. If I regret doing this again, I can just press the undo button and move back to the original situation. Another thing I'll do is I will nominate a few files for the S Plus collection. So I just select the files that I want to nominate and click the nominate checkbox. You can see in the list that these two files have been nominated now. Next, we'll set the title for this editorial. And since it's an editorial, I will add the place where the image was taken. Again, we can see the change reflected immediately. Now, I see there's a second image of the same series, which in fact could have had the same title. So I select the two files. And you can see here in the title field, it mentions multiple values, which is true. One has a title and the other one doesn't. And I can use the drop down to see the different titles that are used uh, within the selected files. I just click this one, which means it will now be applied to the other file as well. That's it for the general pane. Next, we'll have a look at the keywords. We can go to the Keywords panel by clicking the Keywords tab. Or to make the process quicker, we have added a few shortcuts. So you can press Alt-G to go to the General panel, Alt-R to go straight to the Releases panel, or Alt-K to go straight to the Keywords panel. Now, there's a number of ways that you can do your keywording. And for the video file, we'll show something you can use if you really have very little inspiration. So you can use the keyword suggestion feature. You type in a quick phrase that you would use yourself to find this image on the iStock or Getty website. And then you click the suggestion button or alternatively, you can press Control K. This performs a search at the iStock and Getty websites for the given phrase, and it returns the most used keywords by files that turn up for this search. Because this is the result of a search, there can be some, some wild suggestions there as well. So it's important to be accurate and just select the ones that you feel apply. There. When you no longer need it, you can remove the panel. Again, here we can use the undo feature to go back in time or redo to go forward in time. We see that we have five keywords, which means the keywords are valid for this file because five is the minimum. This was the first way of keywording by using the keyword suggestion. Another way is to specifically mention the keywords that you want. We will do this for the remainder of the files. So you type in the keywords separated by comma. Press enter. We see that three of the keywords were immediately recognized by the controlled vocabulary of Getty. For girl, we need to refine so let's say that we select these two and then we can click to remove the panel. For play, we have to refine whether it's a theoretical play or whether it's the act of playing. And since there's only one of the options that we want to select, we can uh, use shift click to select the item and to, rem to remove the button at the same time, which is a little bit quicker. That's it for keywords that apply to all these files. And now we can do some individual 
edits. For instance, for these three files, we have the act of jumping. So we add jump as a keyword. For these two files, we could add togetherness. And then we can go over the individual files and see if there's some changes that we want to make. For instance, you could say that this image doesn't show any sand or beach at all. So beach doesn't really apply here. We'll remove it. And you can see that in this case, six keywords have been selected. There's two in gray. These are, are shown because other files in the same batch are using these keywords. So you could see these as suggestions, like perhaps you want to have this keyword as well, because at least one other file in this batch is using it. So that's the way that you can go over your keywording. Now for the two editorial files, we have mentioned the city in the title, but we also want to add the city as a keyword. So we will type it. And as we can expect, it is not recognized. So we don't get any suggestions from the vocabulary. It is not recognized to be a term in the vocabulary, which, which is to be expected, of course. It's just a little city. So, but we do feel strongly about adding it because for editorial purposes, uh, it might be important if somebody specifically wants an image of this beach, then they, they would be searching for this city, the name of the city. So we just click the keyword itself and you can see it's being added in a different color. That's because Getty considered this to be a candidate keyword. You can, if you, if you're not sure about the color coding of the, of the different keywords, you can just hover your mouse over them. And in this case, it's a candidate keyword, which means it is accepted as a keyword. So it's searchable, but it will not be translated in different languages because it's not part of the vocabulary, but you still get the chance to add it just the same. That's it for keywording. Next, we'll have a look at releases. We use the shortcut Alt-R to go straight to the releases panel. And we'll be adding releases to a number of these files. Let's select the first batch of files. And we can click the show all button to see all the releases that we all already have in the system. There's a search field, so you can search to limit the number of items being shown. And you select the release, which means that you attach this release to the selected files. Again, you can undo or redo. The second release is one that we still have to add to the system. So we'll press the Add Model Release button and we'll select it. You can see that there's an error being shown here for this newly added release. And this is because it doesn't have a birthday yet. So we will add it. For some of the files, we will add this release, not for this one. So we deselect the file, but for the other files, it applies. So we'll link this release to the other files. And we can see in the release column that these releases, uh, these files have two releases. This file has one release. And the video file remains to be done. The video file as well as this file should have the same release attached. And you can see that this is a mixed state. Uh, the reason is that the release has already been assigned to the bottom file of the two, but not yet to the other one. So we can click here to turn it on for both files. And then we see that this 
file has one release assigned. In fact, I should assign the two in this case. There you go. Okay, so these two, this is just one and then two, etc. So that's all there is to it to assign releases to your files. We hope you've enjoyed this video and have discovered a new tool for your toolbox for working efficiently with DeepMeta. Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. We'll add more videos in the future. Thank you.